Hi, my name is Mary Galvin. I come from a nonprofit organization in South Africa called Mpilo Wamanzi, which means water is life. And I'm also working part time for the Council of Canadians. We just finished a session called Land, Water and Climate Change in the lead up to Rio. And um, the main point that I was making in the session was that the way that most people in Africa will experience climate change is through water. And so it's essential that if we don't want to lead to human suffering and disasters when it comes to the impacts of climate change, that we start paying more attention to both mitigation but also to adaptation because our, our focus as activists is generally on mitigation to hold the governments responsible for the emissions. But when it comes to local communities, they can't just wait for the change at that level of mitigation, especially now with something like the green economy being pushed for and introduced. We need to, to support people in their efforts toward adaptation, which is often thought of, at least in South Africa, as a sellout position. So, I was basically talking about those points and what's happening in the four communities in Eteguini and Durban where we're working, where people are, are feeling the impacts. They know what climate change is. They might not call it climate change, but they're experiencing it through uh, changes in seasons, less rainfall, uh, the, the types of crops that they used to grow no longer growing properly, um, and those sorts of things. So we're looking at small solutions like rainwater harvesting or swales uh, from the perm ideas of permaculture uh, and the problem is that those are generally seen as non-political sort of small-scale technical responses of, of NGOs and the argument that I was trying to develop was that those aren't a small example that's where everything lies everything lies with the people at the local level and they need the, the support and the attention uh, because if you look at it from more of a Gramscian position, the fighting the hegemony of the neoliberal state coming through the green economy, we need to fight it from above. But we can develop the counter-hegemonic alternatives from below, and that's actually happening. We, if we can get people conscientized in somewhat, and politicized at the local level and build on those examples, we actually might find that we're slowly redefining and chipping away at a capitalism that turns into something else.